Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Murphy. I'm a tech person at a school and you can see we have a lot of computers. So when we talk about the digital revolution coming, this is kind of what we're talking about. This stuff is happening uh, to our kids. The, the technology is there and they're going to be using it on a regular basis in their classrooms, at work, at home, pretty much everywhere. So we can either help them learn how to use it, or we can hope that they learn how to use it. I'm in my 40s, and growing up, I was growing up, we listened to rock and roll. But my mom listened to classical music. So every time we're in the car, it's a fight over what radio station to listen to. One day we're saying, you know, Mom, our music's been around for 20 years. It's really stood the test of time. It's great. And she's like, excuse me, but I listen to Beethoven. So when your music passes 100 years old, you can start talking to me about sta standing the test of time. That's an argument that's been going on for millennia. You know, every generation, the parents think the, the kids, they're, they're uncouth and they're not learning the necessary skills and they're weak and they're lazy and yada 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 but in reality kids are growing up in their world and they're learning and using the tools of their world in the world of our kids is really the internet and it's growing I started really getting into the internet in 1995 or so and it's grown from then it was almost all text-based because speeds were so low you couldn't send uh, pictures um, but today it's it's full of color it's full of pictures it's full of videos and sound and all of that stuff and and all of that stuff is being used by corporations and, and people out there in the internet trying to push um, or sell to us the consumers now, in my teaser video, I talked about the, started with TV, because really the TV is a epitome of the consumer culture. You know, somebody else makes something and pushes it out to you. you, you have a choice of watching it or not watching it, and that's basically it. And we've gone from three channels when I was a kid to 500 channels and really nothing good on television. There's probably never been anything good on television with maybe the exception of Walter Cronkite. But it's been around, and the advertisement worked there because they didn't have a choice in it, and everybody kind of watched it, and you knew uh, a commercial was coming. And It's only in the last 10 or 15 years they've been really sneaky about you know, the in-place ads where instead of breaking for a commercial, you pay to use your car or something like that, the commercial. But the Internet kind of grew up with that. And there's always been ads on the sides, and we've all learned to ignore that. The, you know, if you click on something, you they track where you click. And when you go to their website, not only do they know where you came from, but they know where you go to on the way out. They know how long you spend on each page. They know how long your mouse has been sitting over this spot in the page. So they're really tracking so much about you. And, and then they keep this stuff it's in their cookies. They keep it persistently so that uh, they know when you come back. And then they sell it to other companies so that you s if you search for Red Heels uh, one day and then the next day on your Facebook page, you see an ad for Red Heels on the side. And that stuff follows you around. You'll see ads in your Gmail about Red Heels because you were searching for them. And, and they know that People don't always buy the first time, so they keep those heels following you around for years, for days and days and days until you finally buy it or they give up on it. Um, so this is the world that our kids are growing up in. We want to give them the tools to understand the world. You know, advertising is always going to be there, but if we recognize it as an ad, at least we can say consciously, do I want to buy or not? rather than being tricked into it. Why should we let other people build for us when we have the tools to build on our own? So that's what we're gonna do, is talk about the tools to build on your own. X-ray goggles is the first tool, and it allows you to see the building blocks that make up the web. Now you can see the HTML 
behind a web page if you just right click on the web page and then go view page source and that will bring up a new page all of the HTML that makes up the page and so this is how most of us when we started learning HTML in the 90s and early 2000s web pages were not that complicated so you could look at the HTML and, and really figure out what was going on now they have things like scripts and, and uh, which are links to JavaScript programs and that kind of stuff so what's really happening in the pages is kind of hard to see sometimes but you can still get the design sense x-ray goggles just makes that a little easier if you go to the x-ray goggles and you can take this and drag it up to your bookmark bar and put it in your bookmark bar and then it's on so if you go to any normal page click activate x-ray goggles it reloads the page and then as you scroll over parts you can see these little areas get highlighted and they have different names here's a pink with an a and, a D and an LI and a picture with an M. So click on these and it brings up the code and it brings up a little more code. So it's a, an anchor to this, basically a link to this picture. So now I can change this. If I just click on it, you can delete it and add whatever new. And you can see over here on the other side that it's changing that there. So you can change the web page. And it's not actually changing the web page. It's changing a version of the web page and saving a new version. If you click advanced, it gets a little deeper into the code. So you saw before it was separated. Here's what the code would look like in all actuality. So here's the part that I changed right here at the bottom. Scotty Pippen takes stand against advisor. You saw on the basic, they had separated that out. So you have your, your link and the blue on the page and then you can save the changes so you can take the web page and actually change it now this isn't the actual sun times web page it will be a different web page a different url so there you have it in a nutshell x-ray goggles helps you understand uh, take apart a web page that exists and, and see how they built it favorite things to do with x-ray goggles is to Go to Google and activate X-ray goggles. Click on this. And I'm going to go into advance and I'm going to make some changes here. I've got the fake Google logo here. And I copy the image location. And then I go in here and this SRC with this address right up between the, the quotes. And I'm just going to paste this image right in there paste it right in and you can see it's changed everything so I'm going to save changes and then I'm going to go down here and publish and here's the URL for the new one so I click on that and there's my it's, it's a little off center but you can see it now um, it's kind of funny people used to when Mozilla started doing this um, uh, people were freaked out because they thought kids were changing web pages but they're not because if you look at the address bar up here so it's not Google but people never that's one of the, our literacy skills people don't check the address bars so they added this up top here it's a web x-ray goggles remake of this page so go have fun and try and mess with your computer teacher. The second tool is Thimble. It's web making made easy. And basically, if you start from scratch, you have a basic web page where if you change stuff on the left side, it shows it on the right side. So you can see what's happening as you're building the web page. But that's not a whole lot of help for people who are just beginning. So they have the remix and make. And if you click there, you go to the gallery. And the gallery can be filtered by Popcorn, Thimble, or App Maker. One of my favorite art is the Meme Maker, this one right here. And if you click on it, you could see here's the page 
here's the HTML that makes the page and then over here is a tutorial and it's got the first page is a nice lesson plan and objectives and then it, it walks you through a couple of changes on the page just to make things different what I really like to do is hide this right now it's great if you're learning on your own or if you're teaching kids you want to work them through specific skills but I like to start this and just say there's three things I want you to do I want you to change the words up here and here I want you to change the picture and I want you to change the background and that's it and as kids make changes then I ask them to everyone to stop and someone go, comes up like when they change the background and say okay everyone stop somebody figured out how to change the background so let's see how she did it and uh, you know it's pretty simple Finish the next one. and that takes 10 or 15 minutes and everybody kind of gets the basics of adding words and adding pictures and changing colors on the background and all of that stuff and if we have time we can go on and start talking about the width and the, and the position and all of that other stuff. But for right now, it's a real good, I think the best thing about Thimble is its ability to scale. The third tool is Popcorn Maker. And it's all about videos, audio, and pictures on the web. And as you can with Thimble, you can start from scratch or remix, remix and make. So if you click start from scratch, you just have a blank screen here. And you can click over here and click in the URL of your favorite YouTube video or and get that specific video. Or you can type in a, a search term and it'll search the term uh, along YouTube, SoundCloud, pictures, and GIFs. And so you can just find the one you want, click it on there. Now you see I've got two things here and they each went on their own layer. And I can't see the one behind it, so I'm just going to shrink this one put it here and shrink this one move it over there and now i can add more if i wanted to here i've added a sound the video has a sound on it so i can turn off the audio on the video or i can turn the video off itself depends on how you want to do it turn the audio on and off in and the audio or whatever and so this goes on to like this and <clears throat> so now the great thing about this is I'm not actually changing the, the, the videos that are on there. I'm bringing them in live streaming and editing on top of them. So I don't have to worry about any copyright restrictions or anything like that. Now the next cool thing about this is the events. And I could just click pop up and there's a nice little pop up and I can change the title there and I can make a link about it. I can change the, the thought on it, I can move stuff around, I can move the bubble around, yada yada yada, change the color of the font and make it italics and underlined and all that, all that stuff. So it's really cool. And then I can save it and it gives me a very own unique URL for this. That's great from starting from the beginning, but you may... Um, want to remix something that somebody else has made so somebody else has made something you just click on it and there it is I can watch it or I can click the remix button and I can see what they did already and make my own changes to it so here's the timelines they had and I can start changing stuff around you know basically take theirs and, and make my own and this is kind of what I like to do with students is give them a video and then ask them to do either pop-ups to identify points or maybe they can cut and paste parts of the video because oops, in the events page I could skip parts or loop parts or pause parts uh, so they could chop up the video for me and, and give answers to the questions that, that I have. Fourth and final tool is the app maker and like Dimble and Popcorn Maker you can start from scratch or remix and make. Now I think this app maker is probably the most important because most of the people in the world actually in, interface with the internet through mobile applications, a, a phone or sometimes a tablet. And even our students today, our younger kids, their first computer is, is a tablet or a phone of some sort, you know, the electronic babysitter of the 21st century. So they're really comfortable using these things and 
you know, the digital native doesn't mean they know how to use them intuitively. It usually means they have been using them since they were kids and, and using them to play games. So they're not afraid of them and they can start applications. So what we want to do is move from playing to using it to construct or make the web. So the app maker is helping them create programs, create their own apps for their mobile application. So instead of selling their personal information to an app maker for that first app, they instead can create their own. You click start from scratch and you just have this basic thing and buttons over here and you just click on a button and it adds it. And a counter is boom. There it is. I've made a counter. There's little tabs over here so we can add stuff on. In kind of the, the theme of the scratch programming language that, that started a couple of years ago by MIT where they had puzzle pieces and you kind of put the puzzle pieces together to program as opposed to writing the code. Kind of the same thing. You're, you're putting stuff together. And, you know, as opposed to being a simplistic form, I think it's really kind of more of a, a very sophisticated form of programming because companies, when they program these days, they don't, they don't start a program from beginning and run through to the end. They design the program and they think about it and they break it into pieces and parts and, and they have teams working on each part and then the parts come together. So they're basically making a, a custom j jigsaw puzzle pieces and putting them together to make the final app or final program. So you're really kind of doing the same thing here. But like anything else, like all the other tools, it's a little easier to start with something and remix it. So if you click Remix and Make, you come here, and there's a couple of makes up there. Like I said, it's new, so there's only a couple of makes. And you can remix the make or play it or install it. So if you click Install, it's here. And I can install it on my computer or my phone. Uh, or I can run it in my browser. So if I install it, here it is. I double click and start the, the app and it's playing. So it plays the similar way on my phone and you can, I can play it with the app and see how it works. Down here is the remix. So if I want to remix this app, so I go up here and I'm going to remix the app here. I could have clicked remix there. But the actual app comes up, so, and now I can see what this person has done with this app. So you can remix the app that's already on there, make it your own, just as you would any other of the tools. About the tools and everything about WebMaker, it's time to get involved, to become part of the community, to make it better, and spread the word, basically. There's a, a email list you can get on, and they send this out and Thursdays they have a call usually and they'll send out the etherpad notes where the the agenda is and they'll have the phone number on there so you can call in and, and listen in um, but it's not a one-way conversation you're not just listening They're, they are actively seeking um, the input in, in collaboration with people who are using the tools out in the real world so there's a roll call and, and people sign in and at the end of the call they'll ask you, you know, if you're new, come and say hi, where are you from, what are you doing, um, and they'll teach you. They'll share you links uh, on what people are doing, the, the teaching modules that they're making, where they're having activities, um, they'll let people share or teach new things. So. You know, it's, it's a regular business meeting held in the open so that you and I and everyone else who is passionate about um, these web making tools can be part of it. And, uh, and it's not just the teach the web tools. The web literacy tools, they do the same thing. The, the badges they're making, it, it's all, they all hold their planning and development meetings online in the open. And, invite everyone who wants to be a part of it to join.